Hi YouTube, it's Joshua Miles and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is very different from all the other videos that I've done because today we're doing a mukbang says Q&A kind of video. This video isn't going to be a conventional mukbang at all because I don't think anybody will be interested in sitting and watching me eat food for 20 minutes straight. So instead I'm going to answer your questions whilst cooking my lunch and then eating my lunch and then kind of edit it together a bit so it's more fast paced so the questions are answered. Before we begin, I'd just like to thank everybody who submitted questions for this Q&A. I have read every single question. In fact, I think I'm answering pretty much every single question that's been sent to me. Thank you all so much for sending me these questions. It means so much to me. I'm so excited to start answering them. And with all that being said, let's delve right into this video. So today I'm going to be cooking a pasta dish um, with just peppers and onions, just for a simple quick lunch. Um, I was going to do it with tofu, but it takes long to cook the tofu in the oven. Um, I don't like frying tofu, so I just can't be bothered to do that. So that's what we're having today. Okay, so the first question comes from Pink Shih Tzu Puppy 01, and the questions are, what are some cases you're wanting to cover, and what cases have you not wanted to cover? Okay, so two cases that pop to mind straight away of cases that I'll probably never ever cover on this channel are the Madeline McCann case because I don't think that I can add anything more to the conversation and there's so 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 many good really in-depth videos and lots of theory videos on the Madeline McCann case so I just don't feel the need to make a video on it. Another one that I wouldn't do would be the John Bonnet Ramsey case just because that one has been so popularized and it's such a massive massive famous case a very notable case and there's i like with the melon mccann case there are so many videos and so many theories and so much to it and there's other youtubers that have done very very good in-depth videos about those cases so i don't really feel the need to make a video on those cases because i've got nothing else to add to the discussion i try to as you can tell on my channel stick to cases that are lesser known or aren't covered that frequently and a case that i'm wanting to cover which is a sneak preview of what's to come is the victoria Columbia case which i'm working on at the moment it's been a case that i've been working on for maybe two months straight it's actually going to be a cloud video with another true crime youtuber called daughter of remus so be sure to go check her out her link is in the description below she makes really good in-depth true crime videos too they're really good so we're going to be doing a collab together and for that collab I'm going to be doing the Victoria Klimby case and I'm sure Dr. Ramos will be announcing on her channel pretty soon the other case that we're going to be doing in this collab so be sure to go to her channel and subscribe so you can find out what the other case is as soon as the tea is spilled I think I should probably start cutting up some pepper for this pasta <coughs> Y'all are going to start judging me for how I cook and I'm really not ready for that kind of abuse. Okay, so while I'm cutting up this pepper, I'm going to be answering the next question which came to me on Twitter from Harriet Corkwell. And the question is, what got you into crime videos? What was the first case that made you want to make videos about them? I've received a few questions like this one, so I'll put them all on the screen now. And these are all the people that have asked me this question. I'm going to answer all in one. Okay, so what really got me into true crime to begin with was actually watching fictional crime. When I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of Agatha Christie. I think she's a very talented murder mystery writer. I just loved all of her work when I was younger. I used to watch them on TV, used to read the books, and then I also used to watch all the time on TV with my mum, a show called Murder, She Wrote. And then I started watching true crime videos on YouTube maybe five years ago, four or five years ago. I used to originally watch Kaylee Elise. I can't remember how long ago I started watching her. I'm sure there were YouTubers before that that I watched that I just can't remember but I, I notably and um, can remember the most watching Kaylee Elise and Rob Dyke to begin with and it was their um, paranormal true crime kind of videos that they used to do and then now within like the past year or two I've been watching a lot of Gabulosis, I watch a lot of Georgia Marie and I watch a lot of Ellen and Neil. I think they're all really really good true crime YouTubers. And all those YouTubers kind of fed into my true crime addiction and I've always loved researching cases. So that's really what got me into making true crime videos. I'm gonna stop waving this knife around before I stab myself. <laughs> to answer your second question, um, the one, the case that got me into true crime videos on YouTube to begin with was the Madeline McCann case. That case literally shook me up as a kid. Uh, when it was going on. I think it shook literally every single person my age when they were a kid when the case was on the news. It was such a big popular and public case and it was on the forefront of all the news. Everyone was talking about it and it was also equally horrifying that 
this kid was just abducted from her bedroom. So naturally, I started getting a little bit obsessed with that case and researching lots and lots of different theories about what went on and as I grew older, more and more complex theories came out and it was just quite entertaining and fascinating in some ways with more evidence coming out. Um, of all these different theories. So Madame McCann theories definitely got me into the world of true crime videos and watching all these other YouTubers that I mentioned earlier really got me further and further into the world of true crime videos. I didn't used to know that you could just make a video on true crime cases on the internet and it was really fascinating to me to see all these cases. But when I started making these true crime cases I knew from the get-go that I wanted to cover some lesser known cases and I researched for ages and ages and ages about different cases that I wanted to cover to begin with until I settled on the Marlene Santana case which was the first case that I covered on my channel like four or five months ago. Why am I doing that? That is a surefire way to have your hand cut off. <gasps> 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 Okay, so next question is from Siona, and this one was also on Twitter. This is, what's your opinion on the criminal justice system, and what changes would you personally make if you could? Wow, the criminal justice system is so infuriating in both the UK and the US. I think it's absolutely ridiculous when rapists literally get a two-month suspended sentence when they are found guilty of raping someone. Then if you illegally download the B movie, you get a 10-year sentence in prison. Like, don't get me started on it because I will literally cut my fingers off in anger whilst talking about the criminal justice system. Changes I would make to the criminal justice system is to have the entire thing reworked because it's so fucked up and I also think it's very outdated in some respects. I realised I'm literally just going to be looking down at what I'm doing for this entire video and not looking at you. I apologise, but I really don't want to cut my fingers off. Let's cut some more onion. <laughs> Task is here. Be right back. Tesco delivery, I forgot I'd ordered food to go. I have no idea what we were talking about, but let me finish cutting this onion. Ooh. Oh! It just got blown in half. Okay, so while that's heating up, I want to answer the next question, which is from Lucy on Twitter. And this question is, is there any true crime case you have covered that really affected and stayed with you? And the answer is yes. The one that I just did, the Jessica Lunsford case, it was so heartbreaking. I'll leave a link to it in the iCards, but it's just such a sad case and I just couldn't fathom what went on, if that makes sense. I just thought it was so, so, so disgusting to have happened. And I think there was so much negligence in it. It just really, really, really stuck with me. And the other case was the Exorcism of Almanza video, which I'll put in the iCards right now. And that video is just up beyond belief. So enjoy that one if you decide to watch it. Okay, so while that's cooking, I'm going to answer the next one, which is a question from Ali on Twitter, which says, if you can know all the answers and details to any one mystery or conspiracy, which would it be? I.e. JFK, Mahan McCann, John Bonet, 11 and Denver Airport. Airport? Denver, Denver Airport, oh my god, etc. And I would actually really, 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 really love to know what happened in the Madeline McCann case. I just think that case is just... I just want to know what happened, you know, just because it's a case that stuck with me throughout the time of me growing up and I researched it lots and lots. I just really want to know the truth behind what happened, whether the parents were involved, whether she was actually kidnapped, whether Madeline is still alive today. But I think with every single case that I cover that is unsolved, I really, really want to know what happened to that person, all those people in the cases that are involved. I mean, JFK is such a notable and legendary conspiracy theory that there was more than one shooter or that it was set up by the CIA. Um, that one would be really interesting to know, but I don't trust the US government as far as I could throw them. So I'm inclined to believe that whatever they've told us is probably falsified in some respects. Okay, so the next question comes from YouTube actually, and this was a question from Ariana, and she had two questions, and they were, what was the first true crime story that you remember interesting slash shocking you? Again, I think this is 100% the Madeline McCann case, but also the Dan Cooper case. I remember watching that case on Georgia Marie's channel a very long time ago, and it really, really boggled my mind about 
all the theories and everything and I've watched so many videos on so many different theories in the Dan Cooper case so I think that one is also very very fascinating and the second question that she had was if you could work in any profession in the legal system what career would you choose and I would want to be a judge probably in a small claims court primarily because I want to be able to successfully slam down my hammer of judgment and kick people out of my courtroom whenever I want to and also because I get to wear a really really fancy ass wig. I just think that's really, really funny. Um, I wouldn't be good in any lawyer positions because as soon as there's any pressure or anything like that, I freeze up. So I'm not down for that kind of position. Perhaps I could be some kind of a detective, maybe, but I think a detective job is a lot more paperwork than is led on in the movies or on TV. Okay, so the next question comes from YouTube again, and this question is from Nam Junes, and this one reads, have you ever had any cases that have kept you up at night? And to answer that, literally every single case that I do, especially if the case involves children, they always keep me up at night. I always have nightmares about the case after I've done researching them and even after I've filmed and edited the video. I just have so many nightmares about them. And then also a lot of the time there are pictures on the internet whilst I'm researching them which are really, really graphic that I don't put in the videos. But those pictures also give me a lot of nightmares, kind of like crime scene photos and that kind of thing. Um, in particularly, one of the cases that really really stuck with me just because of the torture is the case of Junko Furuto. I'll put a link in the iCard if you haven't seen that video. That case is just... I just can't comprehend how these boys spent so little time in prison for it, barely any punishment at all, and that they managed, that they tortured this poor girl so much. I just... It makes me feel literally sick. And the second question that uh, Namjoon's has is whether she can have any of my food. And the answer to that is Sure, if you trust me to cook your food without giving you food poisoning, come on over right now and you can have some wine pasta. Okay, so the next question comes from Sophie and this one was also on YouTube and I'm pretty sure this is a Sophie that follows me and I talk to on Twitter all the time and that's a journalist and she is really, really cool. So she's asked me, what's your favourite case that I have covered? And the answer to that is that they are all horrible cases so I don't particularly have a favourite case per se, but I think I think out of all the cases that I've covered, oh sorry if this frying is a little loud, um, out of all the cases that I've covered, I would probably have to say the Jamie Kloss case is probably my favourite and that's just because of the semi-happy ending of Jamie escaping, her parents did still die and she was still kidnapped for 88 days and details are still emerging about what happened in that time. But I think that is probably, oh my god, oh my god, what am I doing? Jesus Lord Christ. So yeah, I'd say that the Jamie Cross case of all the videos on my channel for cases that I've done is probably my favourite just because of the semi-happy ending. Okay, so the next question was on YouTube as well, and this one comes from Bakhita. I think that's how you pronounce your name. I'm really, really sorry. Please don't be offended if I pronounce your name wrong in this video. As you know, if you watch my videos a lot, I am so bad at pronouncing literally everything. I, I'm unsure how ling... How See, I just can't even speak English. So Bakhita asks, when did you find true crime interesting? And um, the answer to that is, like I said earlier, I have been watching true crime, well, I've been watching crime, murder mysteries, and true crime for such a long time, and all through my childhood. I remember I used to run home from school um, so I could sit on the sofa and watch Murder, She Wrote with my mum, and then at university and at the end of sixth form, which is like when I was 17, 18, I used to always put on uh, true crime YouTubers on YouTube, and sometimes I'd actually put them on and then fall asleep whilst watching the videos, and that's how I'd go to sleep which in hindsight is a really messed up thing to do, but hey ho. And the second question from Bakita is, if you're in college, what major are you in? I am currently a student at Plymouth University and I study robotics engineering, and I'm currently on a gap year so that I can work on this TV show that I'm producing. And if this TV show kicks off, or if yeah, I find other work after this TV show, I'm probably gonna drop out of university for good. But I'm just keeping that as a backup plan. I know that is a really, 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 really fortunate thing to say and a really fortunate thing to be able to do is to be able to have university as a backup plan, but I'm just keeping it there just in case. It's just something to fall back on in case this adventure into making these TV shows backspires or is I find out that it isn't for me or anything like that. Okay, so the next question is from Pink Shitsu Puppy 01 again, and this person asks um, how old am I? I am 20 years old. I will be 21 on the 13th of July. Although the Tesco driver that delivered all this food just now thought that I was 16, so... And they also ask whether I have a special someone, and the answer to that is... Hell no. <laughs> um, 
My special someone is my two dogs and two cats and nine chickens now. I'm making 2019 a year where I focus primarily just on me and self-growth and working on who I am as a person and because of the nature of my job I travel around a lot so it's very hard to keep a relationship as it is plus I just want 2019 to be a year of just you know working on myself and doing things for me and doing things that make me happy and not worrying about other people so much like a partner or anything like that so no I do not have a special sauna at the moment and I'm not looking to get one or looking or in the market for a special someone until for a while, I'm not, I'm not really looking. I don't know when this video is suddenly turned into a dating profile video. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Okay, so the next three questions are from a YouTuber that I love and adore called Zoe Wallace, and she makes true crime, beauty, all, actually all kinds of videos on YouTube. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description below. And she's asking, what is the next goal for my channel? And the next goal for my channel is hopefully by the end of 2019 to have reached 2,000 subscribers, which is a lot of subscribers I know. And I know I've only just got 1,000 subscribers, and it's a really, really big goal. So I'm going to try and work really, really hard to make that goal a reality. And another thing I want to do for my channel this year is to expand into other kind of content that isn't just true crime, because I don't want the, in channel, the entire channel to be super dark all the time. I want to have a bit of humor, which reflects my personality a bit more. Also because YouTube despises true crime videos and conspiracy videos and everything like that so it would be nice to have some content that isn't shadow banned by YouTube. Okay so the next question from Zoe is if you got thrown on a desert island and could only take three possessions what would you take? I would probably take my camera, my MacBook and a solar panel charger so that I could make a <laughs> 21 part video series about being stranded on a desert island. Think of that clickbait. That would be absolutely amazing. So many views, and I'm, I'm just kidding. And the final question is, what is one YouTuber who inspires you the most and why? And I'm just gonna be a little bit cheesy and say there isn't just one YouTuber that inspires me. Um, there is literally every single YouTuber that I talk to or interact with, um, big or small, Every single one of them inspires me and motivates me to upload more and to upload better content and forever to evolving on my content. Um, just because I just see these other people being creative and that just inspires me to be creative in my own right as well. The next question was on Twitter and it comes from Emily and it says, What is your Netflix show about? Funny story, I actually had to remove from my bio about the Netflix show. One of the reasons is because I was not supposed to talk about it and the second reason is because I'm constantly getting DMs and tweets about the Netflix show so I've removed it from my bio. Um, it does still say that I'm making a TV show but just don't tell Netflix that. Also this TV show might not end up being on Netflix in the end so I kind of removed them out of the picture just in case it doesn't. But people who live in the UK, my UK viewers, keep your eye out for a TV show perhaps coming to your terrestrial TV soon. Kayla asks on Twitter, will you do a club with me for Halloween? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. Okay, so that is my food made and I just passed a dish with corn pieces. Um, I decided on corn instead of tofu. I wanted a little bit of protein in my dish. And top it off with a bit of grated cheese on top. It's gonna be really, really nice. One of my favorite quick lunches to make, although making this video at the same time as cooking, slightly burnt the food. And don't judge me for having tomato ketchup with my pasta, I just, I just like it, okay? <coughs> okay, so the next question comes from Selena on Twitter, and she asks, what's a pet peeve of yours in terms of just being a YouTuber or in general? And one of my biggest pet peeves of being on YouTube is when people accuse me of not putting any effort or energy or any other YouTuber into their videos. I think a lot of people underestimate how much time and effort goes into thinking of ideas, filming, excuse me, filming a video, then editing the video and uploading the video. It can take literally, for the shortest video, it can take the entire day to film, but for videos that I do that are like 10 to 30 minutes long, it can take up to two weeks of research and editing and filming before the video is ready to go out. So it just kind of gets to me when people comment that on my videos, they're not putting any effort in, and I'm aware that some YouTubers that do true crime are able to make their videos look super amazing and everything, but it is just me making these videos and doing these videos in my free time around my job as well. So I do try to dedicate as much time as I can to YouTube, but of course my job that actually pays me that takes priority. Another pet peeve of mine on YouTube are those videos that are like 20 minutes long in their vlogs but like nothing happens in them. They just, they just tell you that they're going to the shopping centre, then they go to a shopping centre 
and then they buy something and come back again. Like, I personally don't find that interesting. If you do, that's fine. I'm not shading you or anything, but I just... What's the point in watching that? So another question that Selena asked me was, what are your goals for 2019? Like I said earlier, with my goals are for YouTube in 2019. Um, I want to be able to get 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which is going to be a real big challenge, like I said. Um, I also want to learn how to drive this year. I'm 20 years old and I can't drive a car, which proves to be difficult because I live very, very rurally in the middle of the countryside in the middle of a national park. So being able to drive is probably going to mean that I can see people a bit more because otherwise I have to take buses and they can take me anywhere from two to four hours to get from my house into the nearest town. So that's by public transport. So I don't tend to see or go out that often. So I want to be able to drive so that I have a little bit more of a social life. Also in 2019, I want to go to a YouTube convention and this one has almost or, or already been completed because I recently bought creator tickets to, oh my God, I literally can't eat food to somewhere in the city, which is in, hello, which is in August. So um, if you're going to somewhere in the city, let me know and we can totally hang out. I would love to do that. And the final question that Saluna asks, also sorry for my really ugly eating, is um, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good, thank you very much. How are you doing, Selena? That's what I want to know. Again, okay. the next question comes from Sam2. So Sam2 asked me a lot of questions. Um, he asks, do you prefer books or ebooks? And the answer to that is, I'm going to be a really basic bitch and say that I do prefer physical books just because I like to be able to have a physical thing in my hand that I'm reading. And then on a screen, even on the um, Amazon Kindle thing, my eyes do get strained really easily from looking at the screen for so long and reading. And if I'm traveling in the car, and um, or if I'm going somewhere on an airplane or anything, I tend to get travel sick if I'm reading from a screen. I don't know why, but if I'm reading from a book, it tends to be fine. So I prefer reading physical books. What are your plans for this channel in the future? Like I said earlier, I want to expand the channel a bit into different kind of more videos that reflect my personality a bit more and just kind of have some creative fun. You know what I mean? See what works, what doesn't work. If there's any kind of video that you kind of want to see from me, do let me know down below and I will try and add that to my list of videos that I want to make. But to be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time that I post a video. I will still be uploading the usual True Crime video every single Sunday. Um, I'm sorry that the past two weeks have been a bit iffy on the Sunday upload. The video that went, came out on Sunday, I uploaded it at about 10 or 11 p.m. Um, and it went live. And it was public, I went to sleep, woke up and turned out the video had been glitched or something and it had put, been put to private and I'm not really sure why YouTube didn't send me an email or anything like that or a notice or anything but I woke up to some of my subscribers and followers telling me that the they couldn't watch the video, it was glitching or errored so I went on and switched it to public and it seems to be working again but unfortunately the video has suffered from being on private for the first 12 hours of its being released if that makes sense so um, I'll leave it in the iCard if you want to go check that out, it would mean a lot to me because YouTube, as per usual, has royally f***ed me over. So Sam's next question is, what was the hardest video to film? And um, like I said earlier, the most difficult videos to film that I find are cases that involve children and cases that involve extreme torture. Uh, the Jessica Lunsford case I filmed, I don't know if you noticed, but I filmed on two days because I just couldn't deal with the entire case in one. It was just a lot to film and sit down and film. And filming, by the way, if you don't know, it can take anywhere from four hours to like 12 hours to film a video. Sam's next question is my celebrity crushes. And um, I have to think about this for a minute because I don't really have celebrity crushes, but honestly, Robert Patterson and Paul Wesley from Twilight and uh, The Vampire Diaries, and also the actor that plays Damien, I can't remember his name, Ian Summer something. I think I have a thing with vampires, they're living out my 13 year old dreams of becoming a vampire, so... <laughs> Sam's next question, second to last question, is my favourite song at the moment, and that is Pristine by Snail Mail, or Alcatraz by Oliver Wright, I think those two songs are really good. The final thing he asks is something that I've left behind in 2018, and what I left behind in 2018, I don't know if any of you people that have been watching me since I've been uploading before 2019, but notice, or anyone that's just watched my older videos, is I have gotten rid of the hat that I always used to wear. I used to wear hats 
all the time, every single day, from when I woke up to when I went to bed, every single day for two years straight. Actually, it may have been for three years, and it did so much damage to my hair, and I was just ignoring it. And my hair started to, um, it started to fall out a bit. So I've got rid of the hat, started using, taking better care of my hair, and trying to keep it healthy. Um, if you have any tips for keeping healthy hair, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. Tom on Twitter asks, is pineapple on pizza with various meats acceptable and why are you about to be wrong and say no? Pineapple on pizza is good and fresh, but I don't eat meat, so any pizza with meat on, I'm not about to have. So I'm going to have to uh, agree with him that he is right in saying that I'm about to say no to pineapple on pizza with meat. Katie asks on Twitter, what would you name your next dog? And I really want to name one of my dogs, Dog. I don't know why. Wait, did Shane Dawson name his dog Dog? You know the one that they originally called Honey? Is it just Dog now? Luke on Twitter asks, why don't you love me? And, um... BE GONE FUCK! Libby on Twitter asks, what inspired you to get into video making? Favorite Netflix show and what's a saying that you say all the time? So, um, I've always been making videos since literally before I can remember. That's such a cliche thing to say, I know, but... I remember having my dad's old camcorder, which had the little tape in. I used to make videos all the time and on a webcam as well, which actually sounds really dodgy. I've just said that out loud about a webcam. But I used to make videos all the time, and my dad had some really weird video editing software for home family movies and for holiday movies and that kind of thing. So I used to edit on that. Um, and then when I was like 13, I was making videos with my friends. I thought I was a big time Hollywood director, so I was trying to make a TV show. My favourite Netflix show has to be... Well, I don't really have a particularly one favourite. I love The Crown. I think that's a really interesting TV show to watch. I love Stranger Things, which is a very basic pitch thing to say, but it's just a really good show. And I really like um, Unbreakable Kimmy Smith. I haven't watched a new season yet. Oh, and obviously I watch all the true crime things that are on that. And a saying that I say all the time, I actually have to call my friends and ask them, something I say all the time. Apparently I say all the time that's a mood or a mood. Nikki Grace Vlogs asks on YouTube, who is your favorite YouTuber? I want to say Shane Dawson or David Dobrik. I think they're really, really funny. Um, and people give Shane Dawson at the moment a lot of bad rep for postponing series episodes, but guys, it's free entertainment. Like, you're not paying for it, so Simmer down, maybe? Stop being so entitled? Okay, moving on. And that's the tea, sis. She also asks, where is your favourite holiday destination? And at the moment, I'd like to say Los Angeles. Um, probably LA is really, really fun. And I like anywhere that's like got historic value to it. Molly Clark asks me three different questions on three different comments. So I'm putting them all in one. So the first question was, is cereal soup? No one wants to hear. Go home. In 50 years, what do you think people will be nostalgic for? Um, I think people will be nostalgic for LGBT folk and people of colour having rights. If you were falsely put in an insane asylum, how would you convince them to let, them let you go? Um, I wouldn't convince them to let me go because A, free drugs, B, free food, C, you don't have to pay taxes, so sounds like my idea of heaven. Namjoons asks on YouTube, who are your favourite singers on genres? I like alt rock, indie pop, as in alt rock and indie pop, as in two different genres. And then, you know, I have a really wide range of music that I listen to, it just depends what side of the bed I wake up on, uh, but I do a monthly mixtape that I put on my Spotify. Uh, my Spotify is verified, by the way, so um, if you search Joshua Miles, you can find my profile and you can see what I'm listening to at the moment. Um, I just did my January mixtape, which is all the, the songs that I was listening to in January, so if you want to listen to that, or you want to see what I've been listening to, feel free to go search me on Spotify and look at that playlist. Nam James also asks, am I ever going to consider making a second channel for more random videos? And the answer to that is, I'm not sure, because I'm uploading any video that I kind of want to on Wednesdays now. Um, so that kind of is what I don't see the point of having a second channel if I'm already uploading the videos on my main channel. Um, unless, you know, it's something starkly different. Like I wanted to make a gaming channel or something, not that I'm ever going to make a gaming channel. Don't quite me on that. But, um, at the moment, 
No, I'm not going to be making the second channel. To be honest, it's been a lot of hard work and dedication to get this channel to where it is today. Um, and I don't think I can do that again for a second channel. Kira Richardson asks, what made you want to start your channel? Like I said earlier, I love making videos. Video production is so fun to me. Um, and I use video making as a creative outlet. And, um, when I started uploading again onto YouTube, I used to upload. I, I've been trying to upload to YouTube and trying to be like make videos on YouTube for a while, but my mental health has just never been good enough to be able to sustain it. And it always ended up control the YouTube videos and schedule always ended up used to controlling me instead of me being in control of the channel. If that makes any sense at all, my mental health would just decline as I made more videos. But now I've started. I'm in a better place, and the way that I do go about making my videos is much more healthy for me, and it is much more of a creative release and outlet and honestly making youtube videos has helped me so much with my mental health in the past five months and um, i'm so excited to see what the next year can bring and helping me with my mental health i think it's so crazy that i started this just because of my mental health and then now it's out of thousand subscribers with people watching my videos and a really nice lovely little community plus interacting with everyone in my little community on twitter or on instagram or on the comment section Every time that someone leaves a comment, every time that someone replies, someone likes, it just makes me smile. Aww. Like, it's having that human interaction. I just think that's really, there's something really organic and something really, really nice about that. Okay, so Layla Earl on Twitter asks, what inspired you to get back into YouTube after not pasting in an age? And the answer to that is, my mental health got better, like I was just saying, and I needed a creative outlook. That was basically it. Um, and I was a little bit bored as well and I was seeing these cases and I just wanted to make videos about them. Oh wow, I have bad acting today. Layla also asks, if you can meet Shane, what's the first thing you'd say to him? Can you hook me up with Garrett? If you could only travel to two places on holiday in the world for the rest of your life, where would they be? LA in the south of France, at the moment, as of today, right now. That's where I think, but that might change tomorrow. Tomorrow I might say... <coughs> New York in Australia. Then Layla asks, when will Josh and Layla be collaborating? And hit me up, Layla. Go on, sign those DMs. Let me know. Layla Earl also asks on a separate tweet, are you thinking about doing any new content on your channel that isn't true crime, conspiracies, etc.? Uh, yes, they're coming. I'm going to be uploading those on Wednesdays. Um, I've got loads and loads of ideas in the bank to go. And then Layla also asks, opinions on Kat Von D. Because in 2019, we're vaccinating our kids. <laughs> And this is for not putting me on your PR list, bitch. <laughs> Selena on Twitter asks, what are your favorite cases to cover? Like Unsolved vs. Solved, John and John, Jane Doe cases. I find the cases with big, unexpected twists and turns. I think most people do. I think those cases are really, really interesting. The cases that have a lot of psychology behind it, if that makes sense. I find them all to be very, very fascinating. And I do really prefer the solved cases over the unsolved cases just because there's an ending to it, if that makes sense. And the unsolved cases, there's a lot of unanswered questions. But at the same time, I like making unsolved cases videos just to get the story out there and just in case it jogs someone's memory of any events that went on and it could close the case in the long run. I think it's really important to cover both unsolved and solved. Sam2 asks, do you believe in the death sentence? And that one is a very, 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 very difficult, controversial question. I think death is an easy way out in some cases, but in the very extreme cases, especially in cases involving children, I think that the evil should just be eradicated at the source. I think it's just, you know, it's just really controversial and it's, there's so many different sides to it that I can't just answer that in this video, if that makes sense. I think there's just so much to the death sentence. Cassie Carlisle asks, am I your fave internet friend? Uh, yes. <laughs> Cassie, if you're unaware, is a really, really fun YouTuber who uploads all the time really good content. I'm not sure why she doesn't have a million subscribers. She is so funny and her content is always really entertaining. It's my favorite content to watch like after a long day. So be sure, I'll leave a link to her channel as well in the description to so be sure to go check her out because she is just She's one of my favorites. And just as I'm coming to finish my food, I think I want to start there with the questions. This is going to be a really long video. I'd just like to say again, reiterate, thank you all so, so, so much for a thousand subscribers. It means 
I'm just beyond words about it. I wake up and look and I see 1,000 and I'm just like, why are 1,000 people watching me? That's just crazy. And I made lots of friends already in this journey on YouTube. YouTube is such a really nice community. Um, parts of it, there are parts of it that are very toxic, but that's the same really in any community. But yeah, YouTube is really, really nice. Just want to point out that just because I have 1,000 subscribers, it's not mean that I'm monetized. Hi, I'm a true crime YouTuber. I don't get monetized. Um, I do, if you don't know, I'll have a Patreon, um, which I put in the description. So if you do want to support me in any way financially, um, it's not a big deal if you can't or you don't want to, that's fine. I'm not really that bothered. But if you do want to just buy me, basically buy me a cup of coffee every month, and there's a link to my Patreon in the description below um, that could help out with production costs and being able to dedicate more time towards videos. Hi, it's Editing Josh. I just had to point out that the Patreon, the perks of being a Patreon member is polls on future cases and you get to see the videos early by one day. Um, so yeah, that's some of the perks. So also don't do it if you can't afford it. Don't feel obliged to because it is not a problem if you can't. Do not worry, the videos are still gonna be coming every week. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is a kind of new, kind of style of video. I've never done a video like this before. I've never done a meat band before. It was interesting. I burnt my food. The Tesco man made me myself. You know, it's coming along just fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. I normally upload a new video every Wednesday and Sunday. A Wednesday video is a random video, kind of like this one. The next Sunday video is a true crime video. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every single time that I post. If you aren't aware, I have a Twitter account where I post updates of what's going on, on the channel and stuff like that and just Although I have a very different personality on Twitter than I do on YouTube. If you wanted to follow me and have updates, um, then follow me. I also have Instagram. I don't post on Instagram, but I post on stories, updates, and things like that. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video again. Uh, and I will see you on Sunday. Show me. Sure, what is it?